Good morning, SML, and happy Friday. We're back here, Eminem, in the morning. We're back. We just broke the record for longest podcast in SML history. That's not going to happen this time. Don't worry. We're going to get you a shorter episode, hopefully. We've said that before. Joining me, as always, is Matt. What's going on, Matt? Hey, man. Happy to be here. Super Bowl in a, in a few hours here. Uh, I can't wait for it. And joining us for the first time in our podcast's history is Coach Polly, the truth. What's going on, Coach Polly? What's up, fellas? Coach P in the hizzle for shizzle. I'm here, and I'm glad to be on the show with two uh, masterminds of the SML. Oh, I like hearing that. So we're about to drop some uh, some truth bombs on the rest of the SML, right? Let's get it, man. I'm ready for some controversy. Let's stroke it up. All right, so let's not waste much time, as, as Prime likes to say on uh, on his podcasts. Let's hop the right into goal, it. Right? The whole Oh, Prime's the old goat. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, not anymore. He hasn't been in the Super Bowl in what four seasons? Let's um, all right. Let's let's talk about we got Panthers and Ravens coming up, but let's talk about how we got here. You know, the two one seeds in the Super Bowl, which it is not a common occurrence in the SML, despite you know them obviously being the two best teams in the league. You know, it's often that uh, a wild card team, maybe a guy like uh, Dan right now, who is the five seed and just barely lost by a couple of yards, uh, makes it as a wild card team. Let's start in the wild card round. What did you guys take away from that? You know, yeah, a- you know any my, playoff game that you wanted to. You know, my first thought with the playoff round was outside of Clink beating NYT. Um, not even just the score. I just think him beating him was the was the only real surprise. I think all the other games went as expected. But I'm looking at two games in particular, and I'll make it quick. Uh, I thought Bengals Dolphins. Uh, if you watch that game, I thought Mike outplayed uh, Monty for the majority of that game. This game was tight. It finished 28-18, but Mike was driving in the red zone, one score game, and he just threw a bad pick. That was really his only mistake. Um, and you know. I won't, I won't go into the suspensions and things like that, but I felt like Mike outplayed him. He's got a lot to look forward to. On the flip side, I'm a little worried about Noel. Uh, he he got a rematch with Doink Face, who he beat last year in the wild card round, and that was kind of an upset. Obviously, I picked Doink Face to go to the Super Bowl uh, last year, but he We're gets not gonna absolutely talk about it. yeah, that's that's enough of that. But he gets absolutely rocked. Um, three picks with Aaron Rodgers, 185 yards. I. I I'm a little bit worried about Noel when Aaron Rodgers isn't there anymore because he's got those abilities. I think he's got gunslinger. Ah, that this might have been his last chance, and so that that really stuck out to me. And, and hopefully, it didn't demoralize Noel too bad. What about you, Paulie? What do you think? Yeah, man, Noel. I've been saying it for a while now, man. Uh, you know, Noel and Doink Face uh, for you know with Brady. Those guys are gonna take some steps back, man. It's gonna be some growing pains, and I can speak for it because before the blip. I had Brady and, you know, the first season with him, I was like, holy crap, this is unreal. And then, you know, and then after that, you know, things happened, whatnot, you know, my key, I benched him and whatnot. I won't get into that. But anyways, <laughs> but then I come back with Daniel Jones and I had to learn how to pass again. You know, those, th- those deep passes, those aren't there with so much separation like there was because the ball takes longer in the air. Like, and I was, I was like, wow, I'm never going to, you know, play with Daniel Jones, but now I got used to him and I think he's the man for my team. But, yeah, no, he's anybody that goes, you know, 0 and 16 versus me last cycle is not a good SML player. I'm gonna leave it at that. Oh. No had his heyday with Freddie French or Freddie Mustard or whatever it is, but <laughs> he had his day with an OP running back, like some other guy I know. But I'm not, you know, he knows he's in the room right now. But you know, it's over for Noel, yeah, and that's what I have to take about that game. All the other games I've watched, uh, QP and Prime, that was a great game today. It could have gone either way came down to the goal line stop oh we're talking wild card all right sorry this that that was the game today but wild card round i don't even remember back that far actually so next question <laughs> yeah i mean it's really easy for guys to lean on those x-factor quarterbacks your aaron Rodgers, your tom brady um and, and it's always interesting to see how the, those guys fare especially that mid mid tier of guys how they fare when those guys fall off just a little bit and i think we're gonna see uh, going forward with Noel and, and with Doink Face, you know, those guys matched up in the wild card round, like you said. You know, I don't know if both those guys are going to be back. I don't know if they're both going to retire or, or they're both going to keep playing, how much they regress, whatever. 
it's just going to be really interesting to see how they replace them because there's no Jordan Love in Green Bay anymore. Uh, touching base on the Lions, yes, it was an upset. Um, and yes, I'm surprised that the Lions won by 28 points. I, I didn't have them winning that game by that much. But hey, I said it last episode. I mean, hey, this Lions team could have, and they didn't, but they could have gone on a run here. And they only lost by one score to the Panthers in the divisional round. I, I, I saw this even during the regular season. Even after that loss to Figs, I said, you know what? Hey, I still see the Lions being able to make some moves, and and they proved me right here with this wild card win. Yeah, he looked good, and he played. You know, we're going to get into it, but he played Faz really well too. Uh, but but right before we jump into the divisional round, where I want to talk about the Lions a little bit more, I got to get Coach P's thoughts on one other game that I just remembered. Uh, Dan and Dump. So Dump comes into this game, wins the division. Tua, who he trades a first round pick for, is fifth in yards and seventh in touchdowns. He comes into this game. Here's his passing stats. Jalen Hurts, 10 of 11, Tua, 1 of 5. So he used Jalen Hurts in this game as a passer more than he used Tua, who, again, was 5th in yards and 7th in touchdowns. Pauly, why? Why did, why did Dump do that? I think if you ask Dump that same question, he's going to say, Yo, man, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I, I just felt like, it. you know, all I'm good at is putting things up and, and putting them back down. I don't really know anything else, but... That's stupid. Okay, he comes out. He goes righty, lefty. I can see maybe if they were both right-handed or left-handed or the same. But he goes he, he goes righty, lefty, righty, lefty. He keeps bringing him in like a rotating wheel. I'm like, what is going on, Dump? In, in, in that game, Dump looked absolutely horrible. Yes, Dan was in a lot of people's DMs. I knew for a fact, and he was prepared. But that's no excuse for Dump to just shit his pants there. Like, unbelievable. That was one of the worst playoff games. And I knew it was coming because anytime we get the steroid dump in chat, it's big trouble. It's when he's quiet that you have to worry about him. <laughs> yeah, he looked gun shy in that game. Like, he he had, he would do pass plays and he would just hold the ball and take a sack. And that's not like dump. I played him a couple weeks ago um, late in the season and he was gunslinging all, all over me. Um, so, really weird decision. Interested to see what he does going forward. But, sorry, Meats, I had to get Paulie's thoughts on that. I knew he'd be fired up. No, you're dead right, and and Paul, you're right too about that that dump narrative. You're right. I mean, that's it's been that way for two years at this point. When dump is loud in chat, he's gonna lay an egg, and, and that's just the way that it is. It's really you're scared of him when you go into a game of, with him, and he doesn't talk shit to you in chat. That's when you're scared of him. That's when you're gonna lose. Um, all right, moving on to the divisional round. Um, I, you know, I'll take this first. I'm. I don't have a lot to say about the AFC. I think we saw what we saw. I will touch on Ravens Bengals because that was an extremely weird game, in my opinion. They scored 91 total points in that game. The final score was 49 to 42. That's one of the most highest highest scoring games in relative recent uh, playoff history, and at least in my mind. But here's the thing about that game: it wasn't just high scoring. They committed five total turnovers, and they still scored that many points. And and most of those points were on offense, too. I, I don't know how many defensive touchdowns there were, but there weren't many because that Ravens team still scored at least five uh, offensive touchdowns. That's really interesting to me. And then on the NFC side, I mean, again, you weren't really surprised by a whole lot. You had two seven-point games, but, you know, the guys you think are favored in both games come out on top. We saw a, a little bit of a return of uh, Doink Face from last year as he uh, falls to the Falcons. I mean, I don't really think there's much to say about the divisional round. Yeah, I you know I look at the AFC. Um, you know there were two there were kick returns by both the Ravens and the Bengals, but other than that, kind of an offensive fireworks. I think Monty plays defense either. Maybe, maybe he I think maybe he places bets when he plays defense or he closes his eyes but he's uh, so the Ravens scoring 49 not surprising but uh, QP kind of was in that game the whole the whole game and then it got spooky close uh, at, at the end um, but he pulled it out uh, I think Dan beating doink face kind of like Noel I, I think doink face is better than Noel but he's running out of time like Paulie said you know Brady's not getting any younger and I don't know how, and he had Aaron Rodgers before the blip, uh, when he was with the Raiders. He made that trade. I, I don't know what he looks like without a X factor quarterback with those abilities. And then you look at you look at 
uh, you know, poor Dom. He demolished me. I couldn't figure out his schemes, which are very simple, but I knew Prime would, and uh, the GOAT does what the GOAT does, and he, and he blew him out. What did you think of that round, Pauly? Yeah, you know, as far as the Bengals game goes, you would think that two teams that play each other twice a year would be a low-scoring game because they know each other's tendency as an offense, and they can stop them a little bit easier, but I don't know. That's just a track meet there, and, and you know, Prime could have used, um, you know, his little buddy, the Panda Bears, points in, in the game he just played a couple, you know, today, earlier, you know, to, to beat QP, but, you know, obviously he didn't have that many points. But um, who else? The, you know, Snoopy, man. All right, Snoopy last season was 2-18. Two and, two and 18. Okay, come on. He's he's the comeback player of the decade for SML. Like, unbelievable. You know, he loses to Faz, and, and, and uh, you know, Snoopy is, is – I don't know what to tell you, man. He's on the coattails of Faz, but – um, he played well this season. Uh, nobody knows why. All of a sudden, the big comeback. But, I, you know, it was great. Great comeback by you, Snoopy. Um, the other game, Dom. Dom's hard to figure out at times, but it starts with Waller. And it starts and ends with Waller. So that's one of the guys you have to watch. Uh, Dom's kind of a, you know, he's a silent assassin. But um, you had problems with him, and Prime didn't because Prime's took care of that fire a lo- many times before. So um, that's my thoughts on that round. Yeah, you know, Clink's a good. That's the one game I didn't touch on, but I, I, I don't know. I there might be some. I, I know Clink and, and Faz are are really good buddies. Uh, I think they're like brothers. Uh, <coughs> good buddies. <laughs> Clink, Clink threw five interceptions, only lost by seven to the Madden Prodigy, who is now in the Super Bowl. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb here. I think Faz took it a little easy on the guy, because you throw five picks against Faz in this in the in the playoffs. <laughs> You should be getting blown out. Look, I didn't watch yeah. that game. I didn't realize that he threw five picks until right now. But, Paulie, I think you're right again. Um, I'm almost willing to chalk last season up for the Lions as, as just having the worst roster in the league. We saw the Lions turn around pre-blip and, and win the Super Bowl in Season 2. This time in Season 2, they make it to the divisional round. It's not a tough team to rebuild but it is a significant rebuild that that team requires. All right. I guess nobody else had anything to add. All right, moving on. Fresh on our mind, the championship round. We just witnessed this a couple hours ago at the time of recording. Uh, Let's start with the first game, Panthers-Falcons. It was a low-scoring game. Uh, Panthers won 17-10. And I got to say, when I saw the score was 10-10, I think that was the score at halftime, I said, you know what, Dan is going to win this game because that's the way that that rivalry has gone so far this cycle. When it's a low-scoring game, Dan wins because that's the way Dan wants to play, coward ball as Faz calls it. And when it's a high-scoring game, Faz is going to win. We saw Faz put up 50 on him and, and Dan put up 40 and Faz won that game. And that was, uh, I guess that was last season, but it, it feels more recent than that. However, this time, Faz comes around and, and he pulls out a 17-10 victory. That, that's just a gritty win. And neither of these two teams were perfect today, or I guess at the time you're listening to this last night, but Faz got it done. Yeah, Faz did get it done. And, um, you know, coming into this game, they played twice during the regular season. Uh, combined score of Faz uh, 94 and Dan 45. But you knew, you knew in the playoffs, Dan's not going to get blown out. He's he's going to make the adjustments. Uh, you know, like like Paulie said, uh, those were two high scoring games, mostly by Faz. But when you have two teams that play each other so much, you expect a low scoring game, especially when it's the Messiah who's going to study. He know he doesn't even really need to probably study Faz all that much because he plays him so much. But man. Dan reminds me of a guy last year in Madden 21 who couldn't pass worth a lick, so he just ran the ball a lot and found success, but ultimately got derailed by someone who could throw the ball. That person is me. When I watched Dan play this Madden and that game, he looked like me. He was 8 of 16 with Teddy, 103 yards, so he's barely throwing the ball past the line of scrimmage. His one interception was an absolutely terrible read on a uh, it was a streak to Hayden Hurst, and he threw it into double coverage. That's something I would do, still do. I think Dan's. I know he want. I know he won a Simbardi, but I, he doesn't leave himself margin for error with the way he runs his offense, similar to how I did it last year. So, I think Dan's going to retool. I, I I would anticipate him going a little more pass heavy um, next season if he can find a quarterback. 
Good yeah, I, I think that's that win for Fash. Fash should be embarrassed of only beating Dan by seven with his roster. You know, and with Dan's, you know, we got Teddy Teddy Bridgewater, with two broken hips. We got no pits there, and it's still, you know, a game to the end. You know, I know Dan played didn't play well. He has Teddy freaking Bridgewater throwing the ball, and he's already won a championship with him. Like, I give Dan tons of credit to even be in these games versus what's supposed to be the, uh, you know, the Michael Jordan of Madden football, Faz. You know, like, Faz, that game should have been by 30 points if Faz wants to really put his dominance in SML. Beating a, a 45-year-old guy, uh, with an okay team by seven. I know it's the playoffs, a win's a win, but it wasn't a very impressive win, to tell the truth. So I know they know each other and all that stuff, but, you know, stack, uh, Faz's team is, is you know, going to be stacked or, or is on the way to being stacked. Yeah, no Kyle Pitts either. I mean, Hayden yeah, Hurst yeah. was four of 84. If that was Kyle Pitts, those could be touchdowns. I mean, obviously I didn't see every, every I don't remember every catch, but yeah, Dan, what's Dan, what Dan's doing with that roster, which it is not good. It is really impressive. Uh, it really is. Dan's Matt always kind of like you. It's kind of like Matt last year with the Patriots a little bit. I will, I will say that, you know, you don't have a loaded roster last year with the Patriots, but you played close games. I'll give you that. Yeah. Dan yeah I had a better roster been... than this, but sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. That's was... the only point I wanted to make. Dan has always been the kind of guy that he could take a loaded roster and be really good with it, or he could take a middle-of-the-road-to-bad roster and still be really good with it for some reason. This is a Falcons team that had no business being in the playoffs last year, and they ended up winning the Super Bowl. And, and you know, that to get back here and to be, you know, whatever he was, 15 yards away from tying the game in, in the final minute, uh, of this NFC Championship game, you know, you got to hats off to Dan because this is not a roster that should be there. Um, yeah, and I don't know if I don't know if Dan is playing this way because he wants to or because the roster forces him to. But in my opinion, this Madden 22, it's a lot easier to pass in this game than it was last year, in my opinion. And so I think if he could add that passing dimension to his game, which I know he's more than capable of, what he was like the passing messiah last cycle. Uh, uh, or last uh, Madden. Uh, so if I, maybe the roster just forces him to do that. He doesn't have confidence in Teddy. I totally understand that. But if he can add that dimension to his game, he honestly, I think it's going to be really tough to find anybody that'll beat him because he plays good defense. Hey, you know what that sounds like? That sounds like what people said about Dwayne Haskins. Okay, moving on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Rest in peace. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> Ravens and Colts. Ravens come away with a 31-27, advancing to their third straight Super Well, the Ravens' second straight Super Bowl, QP's third straight Super Bowl. Um, QP is, and I've, I've said this for the last couple of seasons, he's the best player in the league right now, and he showed why today with a, a touchdown with 20 seconds left, threaded the needle perfectly, uh, right in the middle of the well, end zone. Meets, 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 Yes, he did thread the needle perfectly, but the play before that should have been a pick. Game should have been over. Let, let's not, you know, let's not you know, annoy him the next, uh, you know, Sunday here. You know, he's good, but the pick, the play before should have been a pick. You know, get me out of here. No, listen, I agree with you, and I'm not saying that he's the best player in SML history. He's not. He's not even close, really. I mean, uh, he's not to the level that Prime was when Prime won five straight Super Bowls, which, by the way, will never happen again. Uh, he's probably not to the point that Sunday was. He's probably not to the point that QB stud was when he was at the top of his game. Um, but he's the best player in the league right now, and that's what's important. And, and yeah, like you said, I mean, probably should have lost that game. But he's still, uh, still, he's in the Super Bowl at third straight time. I mean, you can't, like... You can't say one throw should should mean any different. No, I think he's good. I think he's good, and I think what's the difference between him this year and last year? Is it the team, or is it the quarterback that can move when his reads aren't there? Because last year he wasn't this dominating, right? He was still above average. He was a very good player last cycle, but not this good. I went three and one against him last cycle, so there's something that clicked. Right now, it has to be the QB. It has to be something. I don't know what it is. Maybe more time in the game, but something clicked, or the cycle, this game just fits him better. Well, listen. I mean, Herbert is not exactly a pocket passer. I mean, he can still move around. 
He's more of a pocket passer than Lamar Jackson is, but he's still got that, you know, low 80 speed. He can still move around. And you saw what he did when he got Herbert in Detroit uh, pre-blip. And now he's got Lamar Jackson. I, I think that's a really good point. I mean, avoiding sacks is one of the most important things you can do on your offense. When you're not behind the sticks and you're able to get that away, even to throw the ball out of bounds, that's huge for your offense. And you might be onto something. Maybe that's it. I just I'm blanking real fast. I can't remember whose quarterback was last cycle, but he's just um, way better now than he was last cycle. Mm. Yeah, but before yeah. the blip, didn't he win the Super Bowl with the Lions and Herbert? He did. And that's what I was saying. He was able to get yeah. away. Um, you yeah. know, Her- Herbert. To to Paulie's point, Herbert's not. Uh, he's not Tom Brady. He's not a rock in the in the pocket, not really able to move or roll out. He's still got enough speed to get out of the pocket. Yeah, and you know, but you know, in this game, uh, you know, this was a back and forth slugfest. Uh, these were two, uh, you don't know, who cares? Yeah, okay, Pauly destroyed Prime Week 14, 15. Uh, I think Dump beat him too. And who cares? Uh, when, when it's the playoffs, it's a different Prime. I, 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 it's just the way it is. And this was a slugfest. Um, and, and Prime did a really good job. Lamar Jackson, four attempts, thirty yards. That's that's I, that's a good day at the office if you're if you're Prime when it comes to containing Lamar Jackson. He made some great tackles. There were also some instances where, honestly, Deontay Harris he let some he was wide open on a crosser, and mm. and, May, and Mayfield led him and he just let it. He didn't even try to catch it. Like it just it just and then he let one fall short earlier in the game. I missed that. I but I heard it on the commentary. So and and then obviously the drop pick or not the drop pick. I don't know if it was dropped or if it just didn't get the right animation, but that was the game ender. But I mean, and then of course there was a kick return by QP. Uh, that that that's a deflator. But I mean, you you got to give it to QP because when you're playing prime, you know all the eyes are watching. It's the playoffs. You know you're going to get the best version of prime possible he didn't throw any interceptions um three touchdowns 16 of 22 i mean he was on his a game and he had qp on the ropes multiple times and he stood in there and he went blow for blow with the goat and came out on top and whether he has the better team or the glitch in lamar jackson etc hey lamar jackson made some bad throws in that game too so my hat's off to qp that's a that's a heck of a battle that he was able to stay composed in and win yeah, I'm not 100% certain that QP really deserved to win this game. Prime played extremely well, as he does in the playoffs. But sometimes that's just the way the game goes. Is you get lucky breaks. You get a seam up the middle on a kick return. You get a guy that drops in interception, and, and that's just how it goes. But on the flip side, QP did a really good job against Jonathan Taylor, just four yards a carry, which is uh, good in the NFL, not good in Madden. So... Well, that was that was the best. The best thing he did was that drive, that that goal line. He stopped Prime because if Prime mm-hmm. scores there, this is a whole different game, and we're talking about Prime to the Super Bowl. So that was the key drive. Uh, you know, inside the five, I think he stopped him. Yeah, that was a huge stop. And I want to point out something that he did um, right on fourth down. He, he said, "You know what? I know Prime likes to run fake field goals." I'm going to give him no shot to do that. If he comes out in field goal, I'm going to come out in 3-4 or, or whatever he came out in. And uh, I'm going to make him kick the field goal because I'm not letting him do that on me. And that was a huge turning point in the game. You're right. Yeah, and speaking of fourth down, late in the game, Prime had like a fourth and one at like the three-yard line or something. I feel like 90% of the league runs a stretch there and gets that yard or maybe the touchdown. Or they're running something. In, in, they're spreading the field inside zone, RPO, something prime i i don't know what he was thinking to be honest with you maybe it was his master plan runs up he comes out in like twin shotgun runs a zig route qp's all over it and prime throws this touch pass three yard touch pass over the raven defender it is was the greatest pass i've ever seen in madden history not an exaggeration no cap no this is not standing for prime you guys saw it i hope it was incredible yeah, he can say that was intentional, but I promise you it wasn't. And he should have won the game on the RPO. He he didn't he, prime one thing he does not do. He does not read RPOs very well because he doesn't run them very well, right? You know, obviously the more you run things, the better you get at the looks. That was wide open. I think you know Tiny could have scored on that. Yeah, on that third down, right before he he took that field goal, he ran uh, the RPO bubble route out of a, a shotgun. It was like an inside zone bubble route. And, and that bubble route was butt naked. 
the wide receiver was blocking on the outside and the bubble was gonna score a touchdown and prime just didn't read it right and and honestly it is tiny mistakes like that that result in a four-point loss in the playoffs yeah he, he's probably a little a little sick about it i thought when he threw that zig route touchdown it was just destiny um but he, he's gonna be back and uh you know i think i think tiny's gonna be thrilled i think the last thing he thought when he turned on a playoff episode of eminem was to hear his name so he's gonna be thrilled at Polly for that one huh, i gotta give my little ten tiny see tennessee boy a little you know a little love <laughs> All right, moving on, the big game, which will be Friday at 2.30 p.m., which will be roughly seven hours after this episode comes out. Hopefully you've listened confirmed? to it by then. Is that confirmed? Is that is that confirmed? Are you breaking that right now? I'm not breaking that. That was dropped in chat, like, I don't know, an hour ago. But that is confirmed right, cool. Friday, 2.30 p.m. Eastern, Ravens-Panthers Super Bowl. Uh, and that will be commentated by at least Bomber. I think he's still looking for a second at, at the moment. But... Um, Where's Primey? Is that work? Yeah, probably. Or Crime. Yeah, take a half day. You're the commissioner of the SML. Freaking take a half day, you cheap bastard. <laughs> See, I know. You run, in a, you run it. First of all, let's just. You run in a Super Bowl at 2 30 on a Friday, which I understand, y'all. Y'all, you gotta, you know, gotta make it work. But listen, for the good of the league, we should have just done a Saturday Super Bowl. I'm not partial because I wanted to commentate or anything. That's fine. All right. Let's talk this game. Two one seeds in this game, two of the best players in the league right now, hands down. As uh, as Matt would put it, two of the big five in the Super Bowl. Panthers, Ravens. Polly, let's go first. Man, this, this is gonna be tough, man. Like it depends. Has these two meet, met each other this season yet? Do you know anybody? I'm... They did. They played early on this season, and uh, uh, Faz won twenty four to fourteen. It was like week five or something. I think it was like... All right, so... It was week eight. Uh, eight, okay. Yeah. Okay, so 24 to 14. And unless you play Faz, it's hard to play Faz. Like, it, it, unless you you know what he's going to run. And now that I've played him enough, I think, you know, certain people in the league do better against him than most. And I don't know if QP has that much. But um, it's going to be a tough matchup. QP's patience, I like in this match over Faz's patience. Because if QP continues to run that rock, Faz is going to go through the roof and start forcing things and start swearing at the game and all that stuff. So I think QP has the best demeanor going in as far as calm, cool, and collective. And sometimes in the Super Bowl, that's what you need. Yeah. yeah I, th- I Sorry, oh, go ahead, Matt. Ahead, uh, so I agree with Pauly. I, I think, uh, you know, having played him earlier in the season, even though he lost, and honestly – looking at the stat sheet it's kind of, i mean it looked like a one-sided affair uh but qp he couldn't run the ball in that game dobbins 11 for 39 longest run was nine yards uh he couldn't run the ball we all know that if you can establish the run against faz you are in his head he he gets frustrated uh so i, I look for qp to do a better job of that uh but I'm I don't remember this game unfortunately but just looking at the stat sheet and knowing their relationship I wonder if Faz just knows something about QP because they're friends that he just knows how to attack him on both sides of the ball Jordan Love 15 of 19 230 yards three touchdowns no picks uh Lamar Jackson 10 of 13 212 yards that's actually a good stat line but through two picks no touchdowns um he ran five for 47. It's just, this doesn't look like a QP box score in either direction. Uh, I'm going to go, I think that QP gets his revenge. I'm going to go QP in this one. I think it's a high scoring affair. I'm going to go 31, 28. Listen, I, this Ravens defense, if you're just looking at the raw numbers looks really good and they are really good. Don't get me wrong, but they're not impossible to beat. And, And Faz showed us that early in the season. However, here's the deal with how that game went. Turnover battle was won by the Panthers three to nothing. That means the Ravens turned the ball over three times, two picks and a fumble. That's not going to happen again this time. It's going to be closer than that. I, I, you know, if you're going to put a 10 point spread on it, I'm, I'm taking way under that. Um, it's going to be closer than that. It's. I'm not going to say it's going to be turnover free from either team because we've we've seen them both make mistakes even in the championship round. But it's going to be a better game than that one was at least on paper. 
Um, I think what we're going to see is two teams come out pretty conservative and running the ball because both of these teams, the Panthers and the Ravens, are both near the bottom of the pack in terms of rush defense. And I think both the guys are going to be like, well, let me see if I can exploit that. We got an X-Factor J.K. Dobbins and an X-Factor CMC. I, if that's not the, the game plan for at least the first quarter from both teams, I'd be a little surprised. Um, although you never know. I mean, one of these guys or both of them could come out and say, I need to put points on the board early. I want it to be a high-scoring game, and I, I, you know I'm going to come out firing. So, Paul, your turn. Yeah, I don't know. You know, this game is going to be tough. It's going to come down to whoever can establish to run and be more successful at it to take the pressure off the passing game. I, I think that both of them need to establish a run. They don't want to sit there in the pocket just slinging the thing because eventually, you know, what happens when there's three things when uh, that happen when you put the ball in the air and two of them are bad, right? And that that is, you know, what might might happen in this game if they don't establish the run game. But I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with my. NFC buddy Faz because if he did it did it once this season I think he can do it again and if he stays patient which that's a big question mark when it comes to Faz you know he's when things go bad they go really bad for him really quick so but I'll, I'll take Faz in a 28-24 win um, over the AFC's best I'm gonna take QP and I'm gonna say I you know I I think QP's gonna win by four points and the final score is going to be 31 27 i think we're not going to see a, a lot of points in the first half and a lot of more points in the second half as these guys kind of try to feel each other out you always kind of get that feeling out period in the super bowl i think once both these guys get comfortable and listen they've both been here before multiple times so it's not like they're coming in with no experience of what to expect like we've we've seen previously Th these guys have both been here they're both proven winners but it's a boxing match right you're not going to get a first round ko you're going to feel you're going to be floyd mayweather feeling them out tire them out for the first three quarters and then all of a sudden you're going to get a knockout in the fourth quarter i don't know who's yeah. gonna who's gonna deal that knockout but i think it's going to be qp yeah, but I do like what you touched on in in your first uh, discussion about QP was that he he is prone to that mistake. He made a he made a mistake against Prime on the interception, and it, like Paulie mentioned when we first started talking about their game, the QP Prime game, he threw the game losing interception too. Prime's guy just didn't catch it. He's prone to do that, and and you could see that in the stat sheet when he played uh, fast, two turnovers to no, to none. Uh, he can't do that in this game. Uh, Faz will capitalize. But there's a couple of things. I'm curious. It's a 2.30 Eastern start. I think that's a little early for Faz, I think. Uh, maybe he'd be rubbing the sleepies out of his eyes. I'm not sure what his schedule's like. That could play a factor. Um, and also, uh, Jordan Love did not get a, a boost uh, to Superstar. So no abilities for Jordan Love. Uh, that that might have changed my opinion, honestly. If he wait, got wait, wait, wait. I just, I just actually looked at Jordan Love, and he got Superstar. Is, oh, is he able to... Is he able to use it in this game? Yeah, oh, I, I just looked at. I'm on the game right now, and uh, breaking news, breaking news here on uh, Eminem. Yeah, he got he got quick draw and the one where you can't get sacked. Did he get that last year? And then that he didn't get X Factor because someone was saying he didn't get a boost. Yeah, I don't know, but I, all I know he's got those two because I just literally just looked at it as you were talking about it. Yeah, quick, we quick draw and the, and the one where you extend or whatever where you can't get sacked by the first guy. Yeah, according to Daddy Leagues, week one of this season, he was superstar. So he must have got the bump last season. So what he didn't get was his bump to X-Factor, which at 80 overall wouldn't have actually made much of a difference. Uh, I think he would have just got his X-Factor. Um, but uh, I, I do think Jordan loves the key. We know what Lamar is able to do. He can run, and he's going to run. QP will do that. Uh, he misses some throws, but he's still a great quarterback. We need to see the good Jordan Love. He he had a, uh, a a key interception against Dan, which could have been – he had a chance to go up two scores, and he let Dan right back in it. So uh, I don't know. I think this is a battle of the quarterbacks. I do think they're both going to establish the run, but I think they both know they need to stop that, and then the quarterbacks have to make plays. And I just think QP has the better one. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to agree with you there. And I think it's really interesting. When a game is super close, like we saw in today's AFC Championship game – 
it might come down to who gets more of those lucky breaks, more of those dropped interceptions, more of those bad pursuit angles from the CPU that that spring a running back for 50 yards. And it's hard to predict which way that will fall. Uh, touching again on, on Jordan Love, uh, to get X-Factor on your quarterback, you have to be top three in passing touchdowns and top three in passing yards. Uh, that's an average. You don't have to be top three in both those, but average. And Jordan Love was not top 10 in passing yards and he was not top 10 in passing touchdowns either so i don't know if faz maybe just abandoned that i'm gonna try to get him to x factor as fast as possible strategy or maybe he's thinking in the back of his mind you know maybe i don't want to commit to this guy but that's something to keep an eye on moving forward all right. Yeah. And you real guys quick have... before we get out of here. Yeah, of course. Well, I got go one ahead. thing to say, I, and, and I know you're going to appreciate this meets because my key to the game, not, not the entire game, but when it's crunch time and, you know, I pick QP by three, 31, 28, and he's got, he's got something Faz doesn't. He's got the magic weapon. He's got Justin, the goat Tucker, who cannot be iced because he's got a clutch kicker ability. So that goes out the window. He's got 98 kick power. And one of the recent patches, they made it so like, the higher kick power guys can actually kick field goals. And I think they did that because of Justin Tucker when he kicked that field goal against the Lions and won the game like 70 yards or whatever. So if it's a close game and you're Faz, having Justin Tucker on the opposite side that you can't ice and can probably make 60 plus yard field goals with no problem, that might alter his strategy a little bit. And if you're QP, shoot, you don't have to really push in far into the other person's territory and worry about an ice and where do you feel comfortable because you've got Tucker so that's gonna be my key to the game late I think Justin Tucker is gonna win this game with a walk-off field goal I think uh this Ravens roster might top to bottom be better than the Panthers roster um I haven't looked at them exactly and, and as the Ravens fan and me would say that just on the surface that the Panthers might have the better pass rush but Tyus Bowser just got superstar X Factor, and he's not exactly a pass rusher. Um, he's more of a pass coverage type, at least in real life. But that that could change the game too. Um, I you know it's hard to say in the playoffs, especially that it's just going to come down to roster. But in this game, it might between these two guys. If they're playing even, the Ravens have the better roster. Yeah, and thanks for letting me get that in. Kickers are people, too, and no one ever talks about them, and I felt like I should. Shout out Justin Tucker. This game go. comes down to a Lamar fumble late, trying to be a running back. Fumble, game over. Fazeroni wins it. Interesting take. Um, here's my bold prediction that I don't think we've seen recently. Lamar Jackson gets Truss lit up in the first half, and he doesn't lose it for the rest of the game. So there goes the fumble. <laughs> How does he get that activated? Uh, I, I believe it's five carries for one or more yards. So it could be design runs or scrambles or whatever. Okay. I hope he doesn't have to get it activated by actually throwing the ball. He'd be in trouble. <laughs> well, it is a rushing ability. <laughs> I get it, but, you know, he is a quarterback. Listen, <laughs> he's, he's, he's up and down in Madden, and in real life, he's the GOAT. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Coach P or Matt, you got any of the last – Last little bits here before we sign off. I just want to say that was a great playoffs. I, uh, you know, the speed was great. Uh, I appreciate the commentary that everyone did. You all did a fantastic job. Um, and, and Coach P, thanks for joining us, man. We we love your show. Uh, it's one of with the, with the day that you always give us a warning the day before, and man, it's like Christmas the next day, uh, waiting for that to drop. So uh, <laughs> thanks for coming on. Thanks, man, and uh, it was awesome to be on the show. Uh, wouldn't be my show, wouldn't be anything without the disciples following it. Obviously, it was great to be on here. Prime, get that off-season schedule if you didn't already. I'm about to pop in chat and uh, Snoopy, f you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for listening, Coach Pete. Thanks for coming on. Signing off for Matt and Coach Polly. I've been. I got the meats. We'll talk to you next week on Eminem in the morning.